So I recently had to take my car into the shop. Uh, believe it or not, Toyota's practically repainting the whole car for free. But I might talk about that later. Here today I want to talk about what do you do when the vehicle that you're using for rideshare or delivery is unavailable for several months. I'm going to give you a few options that you can think about and decide whether or not they're for you. So the first option is if you have a second vehicle and it's already on the platform, it's already approved for the platform, then you can just use that vehicle. So if you have a minivan, if you're a family and you don't normally drive XL or anything like that, you can use that second vehicle if it qualifies. If you know ahead of time that your vehicle is going to go into the shop and you don't have a second vehicle on any of these platforms, you can, of course, go ahead and add it before it comes around to the time that you're going to need and be without your vehicle. Now, is this going to be something that you're going to use on a regular basis? Maybe. If you don't have another vehicle, option number two is to rent one through the apps. Both Uber and Lyft have options to rent vehicles and they're approved, they're insured, and you don't have to worry about whether or not you have a good vehicle to do it. Especially if you're going to be without a vehicle for a long time and this is a primary source of income for you, it might be something to consider. Now, what I wouldn't do is use a rental vehicle if you get one. I have a rental vehicle. I'm in a RAV4 right now, a 2023 RAV4 that they provided to me while my car is being repainted. I would not use that vehicle for rideshare or food delivery. It's not insured for that. It's only insured for, you know, for you to use it while your vehicle is off the road. So make sure you're using one of the approved rental methods. I think even DoorDash may have options in some markets where you can rent a vehicle. The second option if you're doing food delivery is you could just register a different dash type. Now here's the thing with different dash types. They're not available in all markets. I once tried to make e-bike delivery a dash type for my account. There's a video here on how that went. Let's just say that it's not available in my market so I couldn't switch to a different dash type. But if you have that option available to you and you have an electric scooter like I do or you have a bicycle or something like that or you're in a dense enough market where maybe you don't need to change the dash type but you could do it on an e-bike or an electric scooter that's an option as well. One thing you should never do, especially with rideshare, is use someone else's vehicle. They are not insured for that. Uber doesn't insure you for that. And it's going to confuse passengers if you pull up to some place and it says you're in a white Prius, but you're driving a red Ford Focus, right? They're going to be looking for a white Prius. They're not going to find you. And you're going to have to make sure that you let them know that you're in a different vehicle. Either way, it's not the vehicle that was approved for the platform. And it's not insured for it either, most likely. So again, if you know that this is going to happen ahead of time, if you know you're going to be without a vehicle for a week or two, the other option is to work your face off and make some extra money so that being without the vehicle isn't a huge detriment. And I want to circle back around to the renting a vehicle through Uber or Lyft. Make sure you get something that has comparable fuel mileage. This RAV4, I've been able to eke out 30 miles per gallon, but when you're used to getting 45 to 50 miles per gallon, that's going to be a big hit to your expenses. So consider that when you're renting. If you're a full-time driver, if you need to rent a vehicle to get that income flowing, think about the fuel that you're going to be paying on top of the rental expense 
that you're going to have. I'm John from Ride Upstate, and I just wanted to share a few thoughts with you about what you can do if you're going to be without a vehicle and how you can plan for it. I hope these tips helped you, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.